Community Greenhouses and I'm here with Diane Sullock here today and we're just looking at the flax that we've grown this past summer um, in the lower greenhouses. We sowed the flax in springtime, we harvested it in the autumn and then we dew retted it over winter time and left it out after we pulled it up by the roots, we let it dry and then we dew retted it on the grass and it was exposed to the elements, the water, the rain and the snow and the frost and we turned it over several times during this period which was over about three weeks and then dried it again and then the next process was breaking the flax after it had, had dried to break down the woody fibres on the outer stem so that we'd get the long lustrous fibres on the inside that could then be spun and then woven into fabric for a garment. So Diane here has, can show you some of the tools that we used for breaking the flax. Yes, uh, so the flax, uh, that's a sort of this dried state after we dried it here in the uh, greenhouse. And then we tried different methods, uh, hammering it to break. It just had to be break, broken like that to break down the outer surface of the fibres. Another way is just to bend it with our fingers, if some of us found that easier. So eventually the outer stem is discarded, it drops away, quite a bit of it drops away and quite a lot of it needs to be encouraged. This In the industry it would be knocked between two boards, wouldn't it? So, yeah. Yes, these are all the bits that fall off, <laughs> the outer fibre. From and this can be used for paper making yeah. and also uh, recently it's been used as composites for things like surfboards, tableware and exciting byproducts like that. So after the, uh, the scutching, we are left with this. Which, uh, some of the fibres are exposed in the middle and the hard surface still remains in patches. We've been using animal combs, dog combs, to comb through the fibres and get rid of some of the woody areas on the outside. It's quite a slow process. We tried the pack, wasn't it? We tried it with different. Uh, we also bits. dug from the Rockwell Park Community Greenhouses, knocked some nails in to this board for us as well. And this is one of the traditional methods as well, where you pull the flax through these heckles, these sharp heckles, to get some of the woody fibres off the stems. So we did resort to other carders, didn't we? Wool carders. Which we try putting the wool carders. So it is difficult, isn't it? So these work to some extent. Really, the hand, I think the best uh, is that, don't you? Yes, so That's these are the animal dog grooming combs. Grooming combs. I think we decided then that that was the best tool for the job. So after this process, when we felt a little bit like the girl from Rumpelstiltskin with a room full of fibres that need spinning into the gold, we have found that other people have been joining in this process. It's a lovely way to build communities and talk and share stories. Last week we had a woman here from Slovakia and she was telling us about some of the traditions from her country, which was really interesting. And um, Diane also is uh, very good at spinning using a drop spindle. So once the fibres have been processed this stage, then they can start to be, be spun. Yes, we're using a drop spindle. This is one for wool. This is one used um, by the craftswomen in Nepal for spinning Nepalese nettles. It's lighter, so it doesn't break the fibres, which are more difficult to spin the wool. So but we're using a woolen spindle, drop spindle, and it's just spun and getting those out of the way, using the ends of this. 
just putting a twist in, into it, which makes it much, much stronger than it would if it didn't have a twist. Just pulling out a certain amount, about two centimetres at a time, and offering a certain amount of it uh, to the spinning wheel, which twists it. So this is, uh, again, still done in Nepal, uh, using nettle fibres, this technique, and in Turkey, in the interior, in Konya, in Turkey, women use this method to spin wool. So, clockwise and putting a twist into it. And wind up a amount, and it's stored on that part of the spindle. So in the stories you hear tales of flax and hair and you can really begin to see where this comes from now because these fibres start to look like blonde hair. This fibre here has been bleached as well. Traditionally, it'd be laid out in the sun to bleach in uh, Egypt, hot countries in Egypt and in England. Yeah. You can also bleach it in moonlight too, I've read. Goodness. Uh, what about lime? I, I read we could bleach with lime. I haven't heard about that. That sounds yeah, interesting. Would lime rot it? Oh, I haven't heard about it. Uh, it's quite corrosive. We're going to try lemon juice, aren't we, as a general yeah. way of bleaching it. That's our next stage. So we have all this scutched flax here to be heckled and spun. Mm -hmm.